Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to take up a very important aspect of field geology, that is regarding the completion of outcrops. We learn some of the basic concepts that are involved in preparing geological maps using the Survey of India topo sheets and some of the basic information that we collect from the field. Now, first of all, we will try to understand as to what an outcrop is. Now, <coughs> outcrop means that portion of the earth or the rocks which emerge out on the surface or which crop out of the earth's surface and are observed in the field. Now we all know that the rocks may be present below the earth's surface, but they are not exposed. They lie under the surface of earth and no one can observe or find them on the surface. Now as and when they emerge out, these are referred to as outcrops. The rocks emerge out the earth surface because of being deformed, that is they are either tilted, folded, faulted and then uplifted. Now in this diagram you can see that the rocks are below the earth's surface. Now here it, they are not exposed. They are exposed only when they emerge out on the surface. So here this is the outcrop of the rocks and till the time they remain below the earth's surface we will not call them as outcrop. So, <coughs> We can see various types of outcrops in the field, like you can see that the, the rocks they are just emerging out of the earth's surface. It appears that they were buried inside, now they have come out on the surface of the earth. So this is the uh, diagram where which shows that they were earlier there, the sectional view, and now they are appearing on the surface of earth. So you can see different types of outcrops, they may be small, they may be larger in size, they may be ranging right from the Himalayan region <coughs> as large as the Himalayan mountain belt to smaller outcrops that we can see in parts of Bundelkhand. So like this, <coughs> these are the rocks, they are emerging out of the earth's surface, they are popping out of the earth's surface. So they may be of any dimension, any size, any shape. So these are some of the photographs of the uh, outcrop where you can understand that at like at this place we don't find the outcrop but here we can see that the rocks have emerged out on the earth's surface. Similarly now this is a satellite view of uh, uh, Kutch region where you can see that the entire region you have a flat surface, the surface of earth and at this point the rock is popping out, it is coming out of the earth surface. So these are the outcrops that are present. Now they may be present for uh, long distances, they may be present in pockets. So that is, <coughs> that depends because now once they are exposed on the surface, they are subject to the process of uh, erosion and with time they may also get eroded and the area becomes a flat surface. Now, <coughs> the important thing that is needs to be understood is to when will the rocks which are lying below the earth's surface be seen on the surface of earth? When they will be outcropping on the surface of earth? Well, <coughs> we are uh, aware of uh, the fact that the earth's surface it is uh, denoted by the contours. The contours uh, lines they tell us about the attitude of the earth's surface and uh, then we have got uh, another uh, 
lines which are known as strike lines so basically <coughs> if we, we this we have already learned uh, in a, my i have already told in my earlier lecture that uh, what are strike lines the strike lines are imaginary lines that lie on the bedding plane so here you can see the inclined bedding plane it is intersected by two imaginary horizontal planes so as and when where the horizontal plane it cuts the inclined bedding plane we get a strike line so we have got successive strike lines now since this horizontal plane is uh, imaginary these lines are imaginary since this plane is horizontal the lines are horizontal and each of these strike lines will have some numeric value depending on the height of the uh, intersecting horizontal plane and <coughs> these the numeric values they keep on de decreasing the numeric value the values keep on decreasing as we move in the direction of depth now these strike lines since they tell us the height of the bedding plane they are also referred to as the stratum contours then the second horizontal lines which we have studied these are the contour lines which are imaginary horizontal lines that are formed along the earth surface so depending on the outcrop depending on the topography of the earth surface we have <coughs> these horizontal lines that take the shape of the earth surface and they tell us about the attitude or the height of the earth surface so contour lines tell us height of the earth surface and strike lines or the stratum contours tell us about the height of the uh, bedding plane now in this uh, diagram you can see that uh, the rocks they are concealed below the earth surface now depending on the orientation of the bedding plane here it is almost vertical here it is inclined here it is almost horizontal the outcrop width of the same bed will keep on changing so that depends on the topography of the area so <coughs> for an outcrop we have to re remember keep in mind that the two imaginary lines the strike lines these strike lines Uh, they tell us about the height of the bedding plane whereas the contour lines they tell us about the height of the surface now <coughs> where are we going to find outcrop we will find outcrop like in this we don't find outcrop here the outcrop is seen here now at this point as and when this bed emerges on the surface of earth the strike line present on the bed will have the same numeric value as the contour line representing the earth surface now <coughs> the orientation of the surface can change due to erosion with time however the orientation of the strike lines will remain the same until unless the beds or the rocks are subjected to further deformation so the rocks will outcrop or emerge only when they attain the height of the earth surface that is the numeric value of the contour line and the strike lines are the same at the place where the the two values are the same the outcrop would be formed or it will be seen on the earth surface since they have got different orientation they will have different directions so the point of intersection of the strike line and the contour line will tell us regarding the presence of outcrop the important of uh, carrying out this exercise is that suppose we uh, have some important mineral bearing rocks and it is found exposed in certain areas we try to map this in the entire area and <coughs> try to see the distribution 
So, we are going to take up this topographical map. Here, there is a problem which has been given. Now, you can see that the, these are the different contour lines ranging from 600, 700, 800 to almost uh, 1000. And then the uh, it is observed or it is found that at this point A, a particular sandstone bed, it outcrops. It is seen at this point A and when it is seen, we try to, we just measure the amount and direction of dip. It is found that it has a dip amount of 7 degrees and it is dipping in the south direction. So, this is not direction, it is dipping in the south direction. Similarly, as we know in the map, we need to have the no direction and the scale. The scale given here is 1 is to 1000 feet, 1 inch is equal to 1000 feet. So, we know what is the scale, we know what is the direction of dip and we know the amount of dip and the point where the outcrop has taken place at one place. Now, suppose this uh, outcrop or the, this rock type is important, we would definitely like to know what is the distribution of this uh, bed or this sandstone bed in the entire area. Now, if we do not plot, if we do not uh, do this exercise, we will just keep on wandering in the area where, where that rock type is. But with this given information, we can have a precise mapping of the sandstone bed. Uh, so, <coughs> our objective is here to complete the outcrop of the sandstone bed. Now, as we have discussed that the contour lines, they give the height of the surface, the strike lines give the height of the bedding plane. Now, since at point A, uh, the bed is observed and it is seen that it has a dip direction towards south, naturally the strike lines would be perpendicular to it like at this point A which is lying at a height of 700, the strike would be north, uh, would be east-west. It is dipping towards south, so the strike is uh, east-west and the strike would have a value of 700 because the bed is exposed at a height of 700. Now, using the amount of dip and the scale like we learnt in the last lectures, we will find out the horizontal equivalent and by knowing the horizontal equivalent, we are able, able to draw successive strike lines on this map. So, this exercise is done. We <coughs> take make a straight line draw the contour interval here the contour interval would be, would be 0 0.1 inch because 1 inch is equal to 1000 feet so 0 0.1 inch because 100 is the contour interval so this as for the scale it would be 0 0.1 inches and amount of dip is 7 degrees so we draw an angle of 83 degrees here complementary angle and this gives us the uh, this 7 degrees here and this completes the right angle triangle where we are able to know what is the horizontal equivalent. Now, once we know the horizontal equivalent, we are able to draw successive strike lines. We know that in the direction of dip, the value of the strike line will keep on decreasing, whereas against the direction of dip, they will keep on increasing. So, first and foremost thing is to draw successive strike lines throughout the map. So, here you can see that this is 700, then against the direction of dip 800, the values will increase and in the direction of dip, the values are decreasing. So, <coughs> by doing this, we have uh, made strike lines in the entire map. Now, <coughs> so we have got the different strike lines and at this point, the 700 strike line is seen the outcrop is there and the height of this strike line is <coughs> obviously 700. Now, we will try to find out as to where are other points of intersection of 700 strike line with 700 
contour line. So this is one point of intersection, this, then this is another point of intersection. Now we <coughs> try to find out the intersection of 800 strike line with 800 contour, but we don't find any intersection point. Similarly, for 900, this is the point of intersection. For 1000, this is the point of intersection. And in direction of dip, if we go, then <coughs> you have the intersection of 600 strike line with the 600 contour line. And this is another intersection. Now, again here, we have this strike line of 500. However, the minimum height uh, represented by the contour lines is 600. So, we don't find any intersect point of intersection. So, <coughs> Uh, in this map, although it appears that the strike line say of 700 uh, numeric value is also cutting the strike line of uh, the contour line of 600 and 800 at different places. However, we must understand that they are not cutting. This is the plan view and since we have projected the three dimensional figure on a two dimensional plane, it appears because the 600 is at a height of 700. Contour line is at a height of 600 and 700 strike line is at a height of 700. So, both of them are at different heights. So, they are not intersecting. They are at different planes. Uh, <coughs> next, uh, we'll try to join these points and some there is a methodology which we have to follow. Uh, like uh, in the construction, this I have given that point A which was exposed at a height of 700. So, a strike line having numeric value of 700 will pass through point A, this I have already told. So, we draw successive strike lines using the given data, find out all the points of intersection of strike lines and contour lines having the same numeric value. Now, this is very, very important aspect because most often what happens that people intersect uh, the strike lines having different numeric values uh, that with that of the contour lines. So, that gives a uh, that ends up in uh, faulty uh, uh, faults in the map. Now, the trace will pass through all these points, all these points which we have marked out the trace will pass through them. So, now the uh, procedure is that we start from one end and keep on moving from one end passing through different traces and <coughs> moving in this direction. The thing which we have to remember that these traces, the trace of the outcrop, it will pass through vertically opposite angle formed by the intersection of the contour line and the strike line. Like we are entering from this place, we will come out here. It is not like this that we and entering here and we come out in this place or here. So, they pass through vertically opposite angles. Secondly, one has to remember that they will only pass through the point of intersection of the strike line and the contour lines. They cannot, the trace cannot pass from either from the contour line or anywhere from the strike line. It has only to pass through these point of intersection formed by the contour lines and strike lines having the same numeric value. Now, <coughs> it will not cut any of the strike lines or the contour lines at any other places other than the point of intersection. So, you can see that we have completed the trace of the sandstone bed in the area. Now, knowing the inform having information of only point A where we measured the dip and strike we have been able to complete the outcrop. Now, for detailed mapping, for detailed observation, one can visit this, this area. One has not to roam about in the entire area in search of this sandstone bed. So, this is one of the very important uh, exercises that we must or uh, we as a geologist should learn. Now, uh, here there is another map that has been uh, given. Now, here again the problem that has been uh, given here is that there is a limestone bed 
the lower trace of this limestone bed uh, is found to dip 20 degrees in 20 degree north of east direction and it outcrops at this point A. Now <coughs> we have to complete the outcrop of the lower trace of limestone bed. Now this map is different from the previous one. Here uh, the difference is that the scale is 2 centimeters is equal to 1 kilometer first and secondly the contour interval is of 200 meters that is given. So using the same <coughs> uh, methodology that we used in the last map, we are going to complete the uh, trace of the lower trace of the limestone bed. Here we know that the direction of dip is 20 degrees north of east naturally the strike line would be perpendicular to it it would be 20 degrees west of north to 20 degrees east of south direction now uh, again what we have done we have uh, at point a first of all we draw a strike line uh, then using the same contour interval here it is uh, 200 meters so given scale so here it would be 0.4 uh, centimeters or 4 millimeters and the tw uh, angle is 20 degrees so we draw a complementary of 70 uh, angle of 70 degree which would be uh, helping us to make this angle of dip as 20 degrees and then we find out the horizontal equivalent so once the horizontal equivalent is known uh, we draw successive strike lines throughout this map and here you can see this is 800 so next in the direction of dip so this is the direction of dip so in the direction of dip the value will <coughs> keep on decreasing so you have got 600 strike line followed by 400 200 strike line similarly against the direction of dip the values will keep on increasing again <coughs> here what we have done so take this strike line of 800, we will try to find out the point of intersection of 800 strike line with contour lines of 800, so one intersection is here, the other is here, then you have got at this place and then there are three intersections at this point. So again, <coughs> uh, we are going to repeat the same process for 1000, we are going to find out the point of intersection for 1200. Now, although we have got a strike line of 1400, but the contours of 1400 is not here, so we don't find any point of intersection. Similarly, for 600 and 400 and 200, we are going to find out the point of intersection. Now, start from one end, keep on <coughs> joining these points, keeping in mind the uh, uh, procedure or the conditions which uh, we discussed just now the uh, trace will pass through the vertically opposite angle formed by the intersection of the strike line and the contour line. It will not pass through at any other place. Here you can see that this trace is passing only th through the point of intersection. Uh, it is not passing through any of the contour lines or any of the strike lines uh, other than the point of intersection. Now here you can, uh, we had these four point of intersection here but it can also the uh, uh, outcrop could also be circular because it has been eroded away and the remnant is so uh, we'll uh, join this so in case of this outcrop either it has to uh, start from one end and go out of the area on the at the other end or it could be a closed circular or elliptical outcrop now in this we again have another problem that is we have also to complete the uh, upper trace of the limestone bed if the vertical thickness of this limestone bed is 200 meters. Now the vertical thickness is uh, 200 meters so if you take uh, imagine or just uh, take a bedding plane which is inclined and it has 
got uh, vertical thickness of 200 meters. So if you we view this uh, from uh, have a plan view of this, now you can you will find that the strike line of 800 for the upper trace will lie vertically over the strike line of 600 for the lower trace. Since it has got a vertical thickness of 200 meters, the strike line of 800 would lie vertically over the strike line of 600 for the lower trace. That is, since we are having a plan view, the same strike line which is having numeric value of 800 for the upper trace will have numeric value of 600 for the lower trace. So this is important. We are knowing the vertical thickness. Mind it, it is not the true thickness of the bed. It is the vertical thickness. So, <coughs> in the present case, we already had the point of intersection of a strike line of 800 with point of intersection with the contour lines of 800. Now, since the vertical thickness is 800 and we have to draw the upper trace, what we will do, we will have, we will add 200 to the uh, numeric value of a strike lines. So, like it, this strike line is having a value of 800 for the lower trace, for the upper trace it will have a numeric value of 1000. So, we add 1000 in all the successive strike lines and again now this strike line has a value of 1000 for the upper trace. So, then again we are going to find out the point of intersection. So, these point of intersection are uh, given here by the green spots which you can see, uh, green circles, the small circles and here the 1000 will intersect at this place, again here at this place, again here and likewise we are going to find out the point of intersection of 1000, 800, 600, 400, 1400 like this. So, <coughs> again with the same uh, procedure start from one end try to pass through the point of intersection of contour line and strike line having the same numeric value pass through the vertically opposite angles and start from one end and come out on the other end. So, here again we have been able to draw the <coughs> or complete the trace of the outcrop of the upper uh, part of the or the upper trace of the limestone. So, <coughs> I think uh, this is a very significant concept and one must understand as to how we are uh, using this concept to uh, mark the or to map the uh, bedding and in between. So, this is the lower trace the blue line and the red line is the upper trace. So, in between we have got the entire limestone bed exposed on the earth's surface. So, this is the outcrop of the uh, limestone bed which we have mapped on the uh, this uh, given contour map that we had with our uh, with us and only using the information collected from point A. Here we have we knew the direction of dip, the amount of dip and the vertical thickness of the uh, beds and using this we are able to map the limestone bed in our area of interest. So, this uh, is a very, very important uh, uh, pro uh, process or method by which we can use. Now, this is again a different uh, map. Earlier, we had the information of dip and uh, amount and direction of dip that also the direction of a strike, but here uh, we do not have the information of the dip and strike, but we have a information that this uh, outcrop it is exposed at uh, two places and uh, it is intersecting the contour of say 300 here and 200 here and 500 here. That means, the we have got the point of intersection of the traces at different three different heights. Now, <coughs> we know that in case we have got 
a plane which is inclined and if we know three points on this plane and we know their height then we can reconstruct the plane so in order to reconstruct or the, to know the inclination of any inclined plane we must know the heights at three different points so we this information is given this uh, bidding plane which is exposed here it has a height of 300 year it has got a height of 200 year and it has got a height of 500 year so what we do we join these points so by joining these points a b and c we have reconstructed the inclined plane now as we can see the trace of the outcrop it intersects the contour lines of 200 300 and 500 at point a b and c respectively so uh, this plane is reconstructed now at these points a b and c the strike lines having numeric value of 200 has to pass through this point a the have one having value of 300 will have to pass through b and the one having value of 500 will have to pass through c but the thing is that what should be the orientation of these strike lines this we have to determine now once you join these points uh, at height b having height of 300 and c having height of 400 now this line will be lying on the bedding plane now if we bisect this line and say the bisector is at point q this q will naturally have a height of 400 similarly this a is having height of 200 c is having height of 500 if we trisect this line and you have got this point p and point uh, r here and this point since it has height it has a height of 200 it is at a height of 500 this line again will be lying on the bedding plane so this point will have a height of 300 and this will have a height of 400 now we know that a strike line can be drawn on the bedding plane if we know the heights of two points or any line horizontal in space can be drawn if we have uh, two points having the same height so point b has a height of 300 point p has a height of 300 if we join these two points will reconstruct a strike line having numeric value of 300 similarly this is point of 400 here again q at so height of 400 r has a height of 400 we draw uh, join them and draw a strike line of 400 similarly at point c we'll have strike line of 500 so all these strike lines naturally would be parallel to each other similarly <coughs> at point a there would be a strike line of 200 so by joining these and we have we know the horizontal equivalent which is here and then we'll draw strike lines successively for on the map on, on the entire map and uh, by doing so we will have again the point of intersection of strike lines with different contour lines and we will point out or demarcate the point of intersection of strike line and contour line having the same numeric value and here we have got this strike line of 200 so we have found out the in point of intersection with 200 here and at this place similarly 300 will intersect at these three points 400 here and 500 intersect at this point and by joining these following the same rule passing through vertically opposite angles and not in intersecting any point uh, on any point anywhere on a strike line or contour line just passing through their point of intersection we complete the trace of the outcrop of uh, so this is known as a three point problem where we do not know the uh, amount and direction of dip we only know the presence of 
traces at three different heights and by doing this so ultimately our uh, objective in both the cases was to determine or first of all find out the strike lines using the horizontal equivalent we draw successive strike lines find out the point of intersection of strike lines and contour lines having the same numerical value and we are able to complete this uh, outcrop. So I hope this exercise must be very helpful and uh, would be useful to all of you uh, in completion of outcrop that is a very very significant and important uh, aspect of uh, structural geology using the basic concept of structural geology we have been able to uh, prepare a geological map and we have been able to map the uh, traces of different beds with the information that is provided. So I hope you like it and thank you all.